All right, hi. Um, this is the video that goes with um, Phil 103 section test number one, winter 2017, uh, which is due Monday, February 6th at 12 p.m. That is noon. So um, it, it's basically what I'm going to do is go over um, the, the general structure of the tests, um, the scope of your responses, uh, and um, uh, some general policies. And then I'm going to go over each of the five questions. This one is five questions worth four points each uh, for a total of 20 points, um, which is exactly what I told you I would do. I need a sip of coffee. from my Star Wars mug. So, um, it, generally, you know, it's um, first off, this is all just boilerplate from the course syllabus taken directly from it. It basically says four or five short answer questions. By four, short answer, I mean a paragraph. Um, these tests aren't comprehensive. That is, once I'm done asking you about uh, the Socrates and Plato er, and Aristotle material. I won't ask you again about the Socrates and Aristotle material, um, except in so far as you may um, engage with it uh, for your um, writing assignment towards the end of the class. Um, and again, uh, on top of this, uh, everything is fair game. Everything I post in Moodle, um, the lectures, the texts, um, that sort of thing. So uh, you're being asked to conceivably engage with all of it. Um, missed assignment policy. I understand that life happens, and if life happens, it, you contact me, and I'm willing to work with you. Um, but if you don't contact me either before the assignment due, due date um, or within 12 hours of it, so you've got till midnight on the 6th, well, which is technically the 7th, um, it, it, then I can't offer it. Basically, the idea is that an extension requires a conversation. Right? And it requires a timely conversation. So if you get in touch with me in a timely way, showing me that you're on top of things and um, prepared to engage with the class, I'm prepared to work with you so that you can engage with the class, if that makes sense. Right? Extensions require a conversation. Um, assignment submission, uh, it's your responsibility to get the thing to me. Right. Um, you're uploading files to Moodle. Make sure your file uploads to Moodle. Make sure you upload the right file to Moodle. If you're freaking out about it, email it to me as well. Um, that way you're sure I've got it. I've got it two ways, that sort of thing. I just, it's, I can't, there are a lot of you, there's one of me and I can't go chasing after you for this, right? So if I don't have it, I don't have it, right? Um, and uh, then finally, I, I know it's tempting. Um, it, you have all of your resources. Is this is um, an online submission format, that sort of thing. You've got videos, you've got your notes, you've got your books, you've got um, the whole of the internet um, and all of that. It's tempting to use sources outside of your own mind in order to answer these questions. Oddly, that's fine, just so long as you tell me what doesn't come from your own mind. Otherwise, you're presenting something that you've taken from somewhere else as if it comes from your own mind. And if I find it, it's big trouble. So um, my contract tells me I just, it's, if this happens, I have to submit all of your materials to the Dean of Students office. Right, that's just, that's, that's, you know, um, I've got a course policy that will help you with your cost benefit analysis. Um, if I find you've done this, you fail. Right, not the not the assignment, the course. Right? And it may seem tough, but it, it, the name of the game is I want to hear what you think and what you understand of the material. And if you give me somebody else's thoughts, ideas, words, um, without attribution, I never see what you think. And even if you attribute and your response is exclusively someone else's analysis, then I still don't know what you think and that's going to reflect in your grade. So you have to yourself provide an explanation of these ideas, these definitions, these distinctions on your own. Right. So um, it, it, this is, this is I, I want to hear and your grade is based on uh, what you understand of this material. 
So, um, so zero tolerance policy on plagiarism. If you're freaking out about that, there's that site rate um, program. It's an online program um, that you can do uh, through the library. It's through teaching and learning services, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a link on the course syllabus. Um, so um, I, I've given you um, a list of all the readings you're responsible for. Plato, Five Dialogues, Apology and Crito, Aristotle, Nicomachean Ethics, Book 1, 2. And uh, remember, we just did Book 3, Section 1. Um, that's, that's all that's important there. Um, and a list of all the video material I posted um, to Moodle for you as well. Um, so short answer questions. I'm looking for a paragraph of substantial analysis. A paragraph by definition is no less than three sentences. So if you offer me two sentences, you don't have a paragraph and you haven't satisfied the minimum requirements of this assignment. So um, the funny thing about if you don't satisfy the minimum requirements for a question, your answer, no matter how beautifully crafted your two sentences are, cannot pass, right? So, because it, that's the thing about minimums, right? But really, I cannot see somebody actually giving a substantial response to these questions in any less than five sentences. Right? It's, I, I just can't see it. So um, again, this is where this becomes a writing intensive course because it has to be, because it's a gen ed requirement with cross cutting capacities. Remember, that's the little box the course has to fit in. Right. So um, if I don't do that, I haven't done my job. Right. So I have to ask you to write something substantial. I have to read it. I have to comment on it. We have to have a dialogue that increases your ability to write about abstract ideas or construct arguments. Um, Etc. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's the idea. Um, so four points each, totaling to twenty points. Um, I asked you two on Socrates and three on Aristotle. Um, the first question is about that transition from epistemology to ethics that comes out of um, Socrates' position in the Apology. It's, I spent some time on this, so it's. It's rather clever, I think. I think I called it intellectual sleight of hand, almost. He gets something from, like, literally nothing, right? Um, the question reads, Socrates presents us with an epistemological, that is, theory of knowledge position, in which we are only able to make a negative claim to knowledge. However, Socrates is able to make a positive, uh, positive moral claims that stem from this negative claim to knowledge. Discuss the intellectual movement from epistemology to ethics that makes this possible. Um, now, to Moodle, I've posted um, sort of a review video on that. Um, if you're in the online course, it's actually part of the playlist. It's the last video in my Socrates playlist um, where I discuss Socrates' moral position is the title of the thing. So you've got that in terms of review material. Um, I think this is the most important thing that Socrates does in terms of what we're discussing in an ethics class. So um, I look forward to reading your responses there. Um, question two. Socrates and Crito at the start of their deliberation regarding Socrates' escape from prison um, and, and Socrates um, and Crito, and that's awkward, I'm going to correct that. So the idea is that Socrates and Crito hold um, distinct theories of justice um, that are so incompatible that Socrates argues that, quote, there is no common ground between those who hold this view and those who do not, but they inevitably despise each other's views. That's Five Dialogues, page 52. Offer a brief account of each theory. Now remember, Crito's theory of justice comes out in his impassioned plea um, to Socrates to escape right at the beginning there. Socrates, think about your friends. You're letting your enemies win. Right? And then um, Socrates um, presents sort of a self-evident um, theory of justice. right? Um, and that starts on... Um, I think it's page 51, maybe it's 
the top of page 52, um, uh, where he, he, he sort of browbeats um, uh, Crito on this. And remember, it, it, this is actually how he provides a mechanism that gets him to the notions of a social contract and tacit consent. Right, um, and really, this is by his theory of justice why he's not able to accept um, uh, Crito's offer of escape. Right? So, uh, so that's Socrates. That's all I'm asking. Right. Now, question three, um, and I've called this the linchpin of um, uh, uh, Aristotelian ethics. Briefly discuss the function argument discussed by Aristotle in Book One of the Nicomachean Ethics. All well, things that have a function, the good is um, dependent on how well we perform that function that is in terms of virtue, right? So um, what's the human function? What's the human good? And uh, what counts as virtue in this context, right? So this is sort of the three points to that argument. Um, Introducing this argument, discuss how Aristotle arrives at his definition of happiness by way of this argument, right? So two points, two parts of the question, introduce the argument. Now, where does Aristotle's definition of happiness come from? How does it emerge from this argument, right? So two points, two points um, should be fairly straightforward. I spent a lot of time in the in-class discussions on this and um, my video material, um, it, it, spends a lot of time on this as well. Um, so that should be pretty straightforward. Um, question number four in book two, section four of the Nicomachean Ethics, Aristotle argues that virtuous actions themselves are not sufficient to develop a virtuous character. Here, Aristotle adds um, three requirements, insisting that, quote, the agent must also be in the right state when he does them. That's Aristotle, page 22. Um, offer a brief account of virtue of character. Tell me what virtue of character is. Uh, it's, I've, I've hit you with the, uh, the, the definition a number of times that it should be sort of echoing in your brain kind of thing. So define virtue of character. And... Um, offer a brief account of these three requirements. I, I don't need an elaborate sort of account of these three requirements, though they're interesting. Um, it like just sort of lists them in a way that tells your reader what the heck they are. All right. Um, so that's four points, right? So two points, virtue of character, two points, three requirements. That makes sense. Right. Then finally in paragraph 13 of Book 3, Section 1 of the Nicomachean Ethics, Aristotle draws a distinction between what he calls non-voluntary and what we would call properly involuntary. How are these types of action distinct, and why does he bother to make this distinction? I think he's up to something interesting here, and this is why we bother to go into book three of the Nicomachean Ethics at all. Really, this was the distinction that I was rooting um, around for, right? Um, now, it's if people have screwed this up, this 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 topic up in the past, it's because um, there are two distinctions in that section, right? Um, the involuntary voluntary distinction, right? But then Aristotle adds a further distinction between non voluntary, it's a new term that he introduces in that paragraph of that section of that chapter, right? And involuntary, non voluntary, and properly involuntary. He adds an additional sort of um, requirement. And um, recall, I've pointed out, or will point out um, to those of you that haven't engaged with this um, in class discussion yet, there is a very handy footnote. You'll see a little asterisk at the end of um, the relevant section there. All right, and um, God of memory serves, it's on page 203. Um, Let's double check that because each of these, whenever you see um, <clears throat> some sort of an asterisk in the main text, uh, get 203, 
Um, you'll see paragraph 13 from book 3, section 1, for if someone's dot, 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 no pain on page 203 of your text. There it is. I put a little asterisk in the margin there because it's important. It's an excellent sort of explanation of what Aristotle is up to. And it actually, if you're trying to understand it well, sort of harkens back to the previous question and the third requirement of um, in, in terms of um, the, 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 the actions not being enough. Right? So um, it, it, it must be done for the sake of virtue. So anyhow, um, it, that's what I'm getting at here. Uh, so you've got this video, you've got the other video material that I've provided for you. Um, you've got your books um, you, and you've got me. All right. uh, I have office hours on Friday. Please feel free to stop by. It's 11.45 to 12.45. Um, frankly, I'm frequently in there early, so uh, if you need me before then, um, it, it just knock on the door. You're taking your chances unless we've booked an appointment, but um, nonetheless. Um, and I'll make a point this weekend of checking my email, so if you have any questions about this, uh, please um, get in touch with me. I look forward to reading your responses. Um, it's always interesting to actually engage with you in an attempt to understand this material. I sometimes learn things as I read through and think about your responses, so um, it's, it's generally hopefully a rewarding experience for the both of us. Um, so uh, let me know if you have any questions and have good days, one for each of you.